This is lesson 6.7, page 340, recursively defined sequences. In this lesson, you will learn how to write terms of recursively defined sequences, how to write recursive rules for sequences, how to translate between recursive rules and explicit rules, and how to write recursive rules for special sequences. So the first thing we'll have to talk about is what in the heck is a recursively defined sequence? Up to this point, you have defined arithmetic and geometric sequences explicitly. So what in the heck is that? An explicit rule gives the nth term of a sequence as a function of the term's position n in the sequence. So you might be like, uh, what the heck is that? And let's talk about that. What that means is we are saying that this rule would give you, I'm giving you an example, it would give you the 50th term of your sequence in one quick calculation. So an explicit rule is a equation that if I wanted to find the 75th term, I could just quickly plug in 75, for example, and it would immediately tell me what the 75th term of the sequence is. That's called an explicit rule. Now, a recursive rule is different. It gives you the beginning term of the sequence and a recursive equation that tells how the nth term is related to one or more preceding terms. So if you're like, well, mm, what's that? It's basically saying a recursive rule shows how to get each term of a sequence one term at a time. So if I want to find the 75th term, the explicit rule would do that quickly, here I'd have to make 75 separate calculations to get to it. Okay, so the recursive rule will show you one at a time um, how to get from one term to the next where a explicit rule will just immediately tell you. Like if I wanted to find the 10,000th term, uh, an explicit rule would do that quickly for me. So let's talk about uh, the equations for a recursive equation for an arithmetic sequence and a recursive equation for a geometric sequence. This is what the recursive equation for an arithmetic sequence looks like. The nth term would equal the previous term plus the common difference. Okay, I'll show you an example of that right here. So look below. It says write the first six terms of each sequence, then graph them. So this is a recursive sequence. This is saying that the first term of our sequence is 2. So if I want the next term, I would take the first term, which is 2, and add 3 to it, and I'd get 5. So the next term of the sequence is 5. If I want the next term, since 5 is the term, I would use 5 and add 3, and that would get me 8. This is basically saying the first term of the sequence is 2 and add 3 each time. So you see 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, and so on. So now when I graph it, the first term was 2, so you can see they graph the point, 1, 2. And the next term was 5, so the second term was a 5, and they plotted it here. And the third term was 8, so 3 right 8 up, and you can see this is an arithmetic sequence. It's creating a straight line. Let's talk about a geometric sequence written recursively. Here would be the equation for that. The nth term would be the common ratio times the previous term. That's what the n minus 1 stands for. So here would be a non-abstract example. The first term of the sequence is 1, and this is telling you the common ratio is 3. So if I take the pre, if I want the second term, take the first term, plug it in here, and multiply by 3. Well, the first term is 1 times 3 is 3, so the second term is 3. The next term would be to take 3 and multiply by 3 again. That's 9. The next term would be to take 9 and multiply by 3 again. That's 27. Okay, and so on. So then I, I plot these. The first term was 1. The second term would be the point 2, 3. 
The third term would be the point 0.39. The fourth term would be the point 0.427. The fifth term was 81. That's the point 0.581. And you can see this is a geometric sequence, so we have that exponential curve here occurring. Okay, for that. So recursive sequence is when you are finding each term one at a time where an explicit rule would just immediately, like if I want to find the 800th term, you don't want to use a recursive sequence. It's only going to give you one term at a time. An explicit rule would do that. What I would like you to do is find the first six terms of each of these sequences. I, I'm not going to make you graph it now. I think we don't need to graph them at this point. We'll do it in the homework. But just find the first six terms of these sequences. Pause the video and do that. Okay, I'm back. So I'm not going to read through these, but here's the answer to number one here. And number two was over here. And three was here. And four was here. If you have questions about this, make sure you ask during class time. Let's talk about how we, re how we would write a recursive rule. So to determine the rule, we've got to know if it's an arithmetic sequence first or a geometric sequence. So let's look at this first example. The first term is negative 30. So I'll put the first term is negative 30. I'll write it properly. Now look what's going on. It looks like I'm adding 12 every time. Since I'm adding 12 every time, this is an arithmetic sequence. So, my recursive rule would be then, my next term would equal my previous term, and I'm adding 12 each time, and the first term is negative 30. There would be a recursive uh, rule for this particular sequence, and you can see that's what they have here. Okay. The next example, we have a geometric sequence. The first term is 500. And you see we're multiplying by a fifth every time. So the first term is 500. The next term of the sequence would be to take the common ratio, which is a fifth, and I'm multiplying that by the previous term. So if I want to, if the first term is 500, the second term would be to take one fifth times 500, okay, which would be 100, and you see that here. Okay, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can write a recursive rule for each of these five sequences. And again, I'm back. I'm going to put the answers here, and again, if you're like, man, I'm not following how he is getting this rule for number five, and I'm not sure about how we got this for six, here's the recursive rule for seven. Um, oop, I misspoke. Six was up here. Here's six up here. Here's seven. Here's number eight, and then my rule for number nine is here. Okay, so if you're like, I'm not following Make sure you ask in class. We can talk about that together. Now, how can we change a recursive rule to an explicit rule or an explicit rule to a recursive rule? Now, remember, explicit rules will immediately tell you. Like, if I want to know the 800th term, I want to have it in that format. Okay? So here would be an example. Write an explicit rule for each recursive rule. So. This rule is definitely arithmetic. My first term is 25, and I'm taking away 10 each time. That's my common difference. Okay? So this might be something, if you're like, I'm already lost, you might want to review lesson 4.6. We learned how to write an explicit rule for an arithmetic sequence in that lesson. You took the first term plus the remaining terms times the common difference. So in this example, the first term is 25. Put that there. And the common difference is negative 10. So I just have to simplify the statement. I'll distribute negative 10, so I would get the nth term is 25 
uh, minus 10n plus 10, because negative times negative is positive. I'm going to simplify that. I got common, uh, common terms here. 25 plus 10 is 35. So I have negative 10 plus 35. There would be the rule, the, the explicit rule for the nth term of the sequence. So now, if I wanted to find the thousandth term of this sequence, I could just plug a thousand in for n and it would tell me what that number is. Okay? Um, lesson 6-6 six, six would be an example of re, uh, explicit rules for a geometric sequence. We just did that lesson. So if you're already like, I can't remember how to write an explicit rule for a geometric sequence, go back to the last lesson. We just finished that. Okay? So when I look at this one, the first term is 19.6, and there's my common difference. Maybe I should put r is negative 0.5. And 19.6 is my first term. So I'm going to put a 19.6 here. My common difference is negative 0.5. There would be a rule, an explicit rule, for this sequence. So if I want to find the thousandth term, I could just plug a thousand in for n, and it would give me the thousandth term. We also want to be able to change an explicit rule into a recursive rule. Remember, explicit will tell you the nth term immediately, where a recursive rule gives me one term at a time. So when you look at this example in A, this is definitely an arithmetic sequence. Okay, now let's get the first term. The first term would be me plugging a 1 in here. So let's get the first term. And the first term would give me negative 2 plus 3, which would equal 1. So the first term is a 1. Okay. Now the common difference, every time I put a new number in here, it's going to multiply that number by negative 2. So my common difference is negative 2. Okay. So now let's write our recursive rule. The recursive rule, the first term is 1. The nth term would be to take the previous term and take away 2. Okay? There would be my recursive rule. So if the first rule, if the first term is 1, if I take away 2, my next term would be, for example, negative 1. All right? That would be a recursive rule for that. Here, you can see my common ratio is 2. Common ratio 2, and my first term is negative 3. Okay? So my rule for that, my first term is negative 3, my common ratio is 2, so you can see that here. My first term is negative 3, the nth term would be the common ratio, which is 2, times the previous term. Okay? So if I want to find the second term of this sequence, I'd have to take 2 times the first term, which is negative 3, my next term would have to be negative 6. And I keep on just multiplying that term by negative 3 to get to the next term. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try these four. Oops. Pause the video and try these four questions. Okay, I'm back and I put the answers to 10, 11, 12, and 13 here. Here are the explicit rules for 10 and 11, and then the recursive rules for 12 and 13. Again, if you're not 100% sure, please bring it up in class time, and we can walk through it step by step. And then to wrap it up, uh, we are also going to look at recursive rules for special sequences. Now, these sequences are not arithmetic or geometric, okay? The only special sequence we're going to look at is sums of consecutive terms. And if you're like, what do you mean by that? Well, when you look at the sequence, this is going to be a new one to most of you, okay? You notice there's no addition pattern here. 1 plus 1 is 2, okay? Uh, but 2 plus 1 and 2 plus I misspoke here. 1 plus 1 doesn't give me 1. There's no addition pattern here. And there's no multiplication pattern here either. So what's the pattern? You notice 
1 plus 1 would get me 2. Now let me erase this. Do you notice 1 plus 2 would get me 3? And then 3, 2 plus 3 gets me 5. Does it make sense that the next term is adding the two previous terms? This is called sums of consecutive terms. That's the only special sequence that we're going to learn in this lesson. So they want me to write a recursive rule for the sequence. So to write it, the first term is 1 and the second term is 1. Now the next term, the next term of the sequence would be to take the prior two terms and add them together. So if I want the third, so let me write this, this is abstract, let me write this, I'm not abstract. If I want the third term, I would have to take 3 minus 2, that'd be the first term of the sequence, and if I put a 3 in here, the third term would equal the first term and the second term added together. Okay, that's all that's saying. Let's try together, and then we're going to stop the video. Let's try together number 14. I want to write the recursive rule for this sequence. So do you notice my it's not an addition pattern. Like 5 plus 1 is 6, plus, but 6 plus 1 is not 11. So it's not an addition pattern. It's not an uh, arithmetic sequence. It's certainly not a multiplication pattern, so it's not geometric. So maybe it's a consecutive sequence. Where let's try it. 5 plus 6 is 11, that's good, 6 plus 11 is 17, and so on. So my recursive rule would be this. The first term is 5, the second term is 6, and my next term would be to take the first term and add the second term to it, and I'd get the third term. So let's try that. The third term would be to take the first term, which is 5, 3 minus 2, that'd be the first term. And then the second term would be, uh, if I do 3 minus 1, that's 2, that'd be the second term, 6. Do you see how I'm getting 11 out of that? There would be the recursive sequence for me to get problem number 14. I'm going to stop the video there. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.